Last thing you want to do is get stuck out in the middle of nowhere with a whole bunch of smoke, a lot of brake lining, and a locked up brake caliper. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flat Thunder channel. My name's Andy, and this is a 1999 Forest River Georgetown Model 303. I went and I did the logical thing. If you don't have enough time to do anything, and you got a lot of projects, why not add another one that takes a lot of time to actually use it? Yeah. Hopefully we can use this RV for some family adventures. Uh, we picked it up from a friend of the family. He took really good care of it, but it's been sitting idle for several years. And with that, the brakes are a little sticky. Um, and I do not want to get the whole family in here, end up in the middle of nowhere with locked up brake calipers. So we're going to get in here and we're going to service all the brake calipers on all, on all four wheels of this model. It's big. I have no idea where anything is at on this RV. It took me about a half hour to figure it out. But the breaker reservoir is behind that. Ow. And the master cylinder is right there. But you can't really access it well from here and you can't access it good from the inside either. So that's convenient, uh, but probably just, you know, that's how RVs are built. You know, you got everything on top of it. Got this handy dandy T-handled tool here. Move our wheel simulators. Guess we probably better get the jack in there. All right, I think our jack is a little low on oil. Time out for oil. We repaired our jack. It's just low on oil. Had to top her off. Well, that took about all the, not all of it, but quite a bit. There's a lot of suspension travel here in this. duty truck is the old style where you have the retainer clip there and it's just a bolt that holds the retainer in pound that retainer in a steel spring clip and then it's just physically trapped by the geometry here so just need to get our hose off the line clamp on the back pound our spring clip out this thing will come off of there Here's the spring clip. Sits on top of this retainer. And the bolt holds it in. There we go. And it doesn't appear there's anything wrong with this one. really good I just use wheel bearing grease on this uh, a lot of people use a special silicone high temp silicone they have it I don't have it to be honest with you I don't think I've ever used it you don't want to get crazy with it I just make sure the entire surface has a nice light film of grease on it. There's our new caliper and our new pads. I don't really think there's anything wrong with the old one. Uh, the old caliper is greased nicely on the slide grooves, top and bottom. Pistons look up, not even dirty. Uh, yeah, this one probably wasn't sticking. Pads even look really nice. Here's the pads that we purchased. Pause for part number. I 
I didn't open these up to see if they're the right kind yet. I hope so. Looks similar. Looks like we got a winner. Here's the caliper that we purchased. Pause for part number. This is a rebuilt coated caliper. And I think we opted for the Finalic piston version. Came with a new spring clip. It's like a retainer clip. Anti-chatter grease to go on the pads. All right, let's go get the pads in, the new caliper on. Put some of that grease that came with the brake pads on the mounting surfaces for the pad and then on the face of the pistons. One thing I forgot to mention is we did not clean when we first showed you. You need to clean the slots for the rear pad so the pad can slide in and out. Uh, this pad came with a little spring clip here that's supposed to help release uh, the pad from the rotor so when you push it in it pulls it back out a little bit that's down there can you see it it's a little steel spring steel tab down there and that helps create that gap there that you see so this pad ready to go back on reverse process same as install it's got to get her up in there uh, and get our spring clip back in and hook up our hydraulic line You're kidding me. You're kidding me, right? Okay. Is that these came out a little bit during shipping and I can't push them back in. So we're gonna get our brake paliper, our old brake pad in there and C-clamp those back together. Cause I don't have enough space here to get this on. Let's hope that opened this space up enough to get this all on the on the truck. Ah. I was getting worried there for a minute. I knew we were putting bull has Loctite on it. this all on there a little bit of technical difficulties because the piston was out a little after you dissolve that everything's good we just need to hit the rotor with a little bit of uh, uh, brake cleaner and also obviously bleed it hopefully we figured out all the ins and outs of how we need to do this because every other brake caliper on this motorhome is the exact same caliper. So we got three more to do. Uh, the back's probably gonna have be a little bit different and unique. Uh, right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slap the wheel back on this and hopefully we can bleed this caliper with the wheel in place. Uh, if not, we're gonna find out because I don't wanna support the whole RV on jack stands.
of the rear outside of the dual wheels here does appear to have the exact same setup we got the, the retainer bolt spring clip line on the back this thing all come off this one looks a little bit more crustier than the front we got a little bit of a ridge here on the rotor no major grooves I don't think that'll be a problem hopefully not uh, but we're gonna get this peeled off here just like we did the front get the new one on the lines different it's got a hose from here to here no clamp up here on the back side you can definitely smell this one's roached a little bit cooking no brake fluid came out of there strange Maybe it all leaked out the front Slides all lubricated here. Oddly enough, this one appears to not have the spring clip. I think that's just an error, maybe. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. percent of the time when everything's gone smooth you're making really good headway you screw something up this really doesn't fit that great <laughs> so here's where the retainer plate was sitting and it, you can see it starts in here and then it gets underneath this lip more. It starts in here and then gets underneath this lip more as it goes across. And that's exactly what I'm seeing here. This retainer pin went in kind of hard. On this end, it's hanging out. On the other end, it's on top of this little lip. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I don't understand it. So it goes from inside the lip where you'd expect it to on top of it and it seals like it fits pretty tight so with that i went over to the other side take a look at it here's the other side and this plate if you can see it in there this has a little spring clip now it fits kind of similarly where it is on top of that lip but the spring clip's in there, so the other side, the spring clip won't fit. So I just don't, something's wrong, and I really don't know how to remedy it at this point. It's a week later, it's another Sunday fun day, and as you can tell, the tires and wheels are still not back on the rear of the old RV here. Uh, we got some problems with the brakes. Uh, let's take you off of there, I'll go show, show you what we're looking at, and hopefully we can try to remedy it. Definitely something is not right, uh, and that's why it's delayed. I really don't fully understand it, uh, but this caliper is going back together the same way the previous one came apart. I didn't really pay attention in that process, but uh, yeah, something's definitely not right in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to pop this caliper off. I'm going to take the brake pads out and try to put it back in there the right way and see if the brake pads are kind of holding it out of position. So 
here's the problem. When you try to put this retainer in, it's supposed to have that spring clip on there. And it just fits ridiculously tight without the spring clip. Kind of a good illustration of how this is supposed to work when the pads are in there. Obviously they're not in there now, but when you apply the when you apply the brakes, it's gonna suck the let's put it all the way this way. When you apply the brakes, it's going to extend the pistons in the back side and push the caliper like this, squeezing the pad against this side of the rotor and pushing the pad on the back side against the rotor. And then after you're done releasing the brakes, it's supposed to come back this way and center itself. And it moves really nice uh, without the spring clip in there and obviously without the brake pads in there. But there's a problem here. Take a look at this gap when I pry down. I'm prying up on the caliper and there is very little to no gap there. Next, I was prying up here to lift it to the top of the groove and that would show the maximum clearance that you're going to get there at the bottom. Let's go take a quick peek at the other side see what it see what it actually needs because the other side went together correctly. This is the driver's side and it's installed correctly. Um, it has the spring tab in there which is this guy. So here's the spring clip that needs to go in there. You can see it has a arch in it. But its thickness is, but its thickness is ninety thousandths, or basically point one of an inch. So we need to get point one of an inch clearance to get this thing jammed back in there. But after spending way too much time setting this up with a dial indicator to make sure our surfaces were square, the groove was square, we realized. We wanted to cut the bottom and we set it up to cut the top. So we're going to do the logical thing and we're going to cut the top and hope we can just slide the whole caliper up further with that. So if we want this part to go that way, it looks like we need it to go down here and up there. So maybe equal parts in both directions instead of just this face. So. If we were going to cut it down here like we wanted to, I was just going to cut this face. But since we're shoving it up, I'm going to have to go down and up. So whatever we go down here, we need to go uh, over this way as well. We'll call that zero on the height. All right, I think we got it. At least we're going to take it out of the milling machine here and try to put it back on the RV. I hope that did it. There's the finish. Looks beautiful in my opinion. Um, just need to get in there and deburr it a little bit and then also deburr the side that was hanging up. Uh, got some scratches and gouges from trying to pound that retainer in when it was too tight. Get her re-greased up here. There we go, moment of truth. Well, we got the brake caliper back on and it's not ridiculously over tight. We got the spring clip back in the way it's supposed to be. I think what's happening is the bracketry that holds the caliper, something I believe is twisted or skewed or damaged, and it's creating that space for the caliper to fit to be too tight. Uh, obviously making it so you couldn't put the spring clip in there. We milled it out, we got it to fit. Maybe could have went just a shade less. Uh, that last eight thousandths, five to eight thousandths, I probably should have skipped that step, but uh, I'm not that great at setup, so I think once we bleed this out, everything will be okay. Uh, in my opinion, it's a lot better than it was before because 
if it doesn't center, it's not going to work right. It's just going to freeze itself in one spot, and really you're just pushing on one side of the caliper, or you're tying up and overheating, uh, which that's what was happening previously. She was overheating and tying up, so this is going to be way better. We had a hard time finding the master cylinder, uh, but we did locate it earlier in the video. It is underneath the driver's side front tire, and I still don't know how they want you to fill this thing effectively. Uh, we're going to try to access it from the doghouse inside and out here to see what the best method is. But if you come in here on the driver's side, there she's hiding right there. Now I already wiped the top off. You want to make sure you do that before you pop the top on these things so you don't get a bunch of dirt in there. So I had just enough room to get that off of there. I mean, maybe, maybe if I have a small bottle, I can, if I have a small bottle, I can reach up and pour it like that. Um, yeah. So we got the cover off and we're inside. And right there is the brake fluid reservoir, which I mean, with all this stuff, it doesn't really, make it convenient up here either so either you do it up here with a long funnel or you do it down there um, I'm gonna try to reach it with a long funnel up here just because I have a bigger jug all right our gravity bleeding worked pretty good we uh, left all the bleeder screws open we got a piece of cardboard underneath every brake caliper to catch all the brake fluid that would shoot out and then we just lightly applied pr pedal pressure pumping the brakes until we started to get fluid coming out we got fluid coming out of the driver's side front first closed off that one then we got it off of the passenger side front closed that off and then we continued to work until we got it coming out of the both rear brake calipers closed it off and now we're ready to bleed it the traditional way with our bleeder cup get our bleeder cup set up and we're gonna go ahead and pump it until we get all the air bubbles out of that Oh, that's looking really good. Way better than I thought. I don't even see any bubbles there. Uh, we're going to close this off and go to the other side. We finally got all the brake bleeding done. And the real star of the show here was our Lyle brand one-man bleeder. This allowed us to do it by ourselves with a whole lot yet less yelling at the wife, uh, just pumping the brakes and away we went. Here's a little quick diagram of how we accomplished this in the process. Started off gravity bleeding all the brakes uh, and manually pumping the brakes with all the bleeder screws open until we got brake fluid coming out. Uh, first started coming out here, closed that one up, then it started coming out here, closed that one up, and then we did the same at the rear. Once we accomplished that, we went to the one-man bleeder and we bled this one first. We went to this one second, third, and fourth. All that looked really good, so we went around and we wanted to do one more cycle just to make sure. And we did this one a second time. This one a second time and when we did this one a second time we got some air here so we went ahead and we did this a third time this one we went ahead and repeated just to make sure there was nothing there since this one had air in it we went back around and wrapped up the front for the second time so essentially if you will both front brake calipers required two bleedings with the one man bleeder and the rear we had three each on the rear calipers should be good to go i've been marked i don't normally do this but after beating the wheels and tires off of that semi chassis because it was stuck on the hub pilot i really don't want to have to do this to this rv so we got her all slathered up real nice with never sees i just yeah silver animal let's get our wheels and tires back on there Ah. 
Here we go. We're going to test out all four brakes. Hopefully she stops. The key in the hole. So I like to follow a certain burnishing the brake pad process. Basically, what you do is you have three moderate stops, medium pedal pressure, medium stopping speed uh, from about 35 mile an hour. And then you have one more brisk hard stop coming down from like 45. And then your brakes should be burnished in or the pads mated to the cap to the rotors a lot better so here we go we're going to do our first medium pace stop from 35 oh boy look at that amc four-wheel drive need one of those it's our sale all right that's our first one Here's number two. Here's number three. do our one heavier pace stop from 45 mile an hour here I didn't really check I don't know what's gonna go rolling there we go That's it. Three medium pace stops, one more aggressive hard stop from 45. The first three are from 35. And we should be good to go. What you don't want to do is you don't want to drag your brakes. Made it back in the driveway. That was quite the adventure. Everything went smooth, but the whole problem with the brake caliper mounting over here on the passenger rear side really delayed things. <clears throat> we could have had this done last weekend. Uh, but that kind of derailed the whole thing. If you uh, like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave your questions and comments in that section below. And don't forget to punch that subscribe button your way out. This is our first RV slash camping experience. And once we get this thing fixed up, we're going to try to take it out and use it. Uh, but we have no idea. So if there's certain things that first timers need to know that you don't know that are like, oh, wow, don't do that. Drop down in the comment section. Help your old pal Andy out.